Okay, so I'm at it again. This is a new cluster for the courier. This is a Mazda cluster. So you had gauge, gauge, idiot light, no ammeter down there. So for the way the wiring is in my courier, the ammeter really doesn't work unless I am cranking it over. That's the only time it moves. And ammeters have been a source of fire, so we're putting this in there. Now forgive the mess of the paint. The can of paint I had didn't have any propellant in it left, so I had to crush the can and kind of squirt the paint out. It doesn't really matter, though. It's going to do the job. Um... The white paint will make it reflect. It'll make the lights brighter like what I did in the Celica. So we're going to put this thing back together. I've already put the circuit board on the back. And uh, I'll put the two gauges in it. And tomorrow we'll do the speedometer because I'm going to keep my early speedometer. Um, so once I pull it out. Plus the lenses had some real small cracks in them so i'm going to use the lenses off the other gauges as well okay so it's back together i went ahead and put the lenses back in we got the high beams that's the charge light where the ammeter would have been and gauge plate everything's all cleaned up now one thing that i'm really happy with is in one of the other videos, you might have remembered, the speedometer is out of an older unit. It doesn't have the, it doesn't have the, um, kilometers, and the font is different. So, it actually matches this font. So, like, I don't have one here, but you know, the later one I'll show you tomorrow, instead of it saying fuel temp and gen, it has emblems, a little gas pump, a little thermometer, a little battery, where this is the older look that I wanted with the larger characters that matches the speedometer that will go in tomorrow. And one bad thing is the paint is kind of faded on the needles. I don't have any new paint. Oh well. One of the things I thought about doing is painting the inside of the high beam black so it would reflect less light because at night the glare coming through that is terrible but i'll probably leave it so that's it for tonight tomorrow after i drop luke off at the bus stop i'll come home and yank the dash apart again and uh change this see you then Alrighty. Today Luke has a costume day at school. Yeah, I guess. So he's wearing his bunny outfit that one of his aunts got him. It's just about too small for him. Okay. So when I go back home, we are going to rip all this back out or we're going to remove it carefully. We're going to change this cluster. So that ammeter doesn't move. I would have to run everything in the truck through that ammeter right now. It's just a shunt. The only time it moves is when I crank it over. Let's see. So if I flash the lights, nothing. Let's see. And ammeters have a terrible habit of burning things down. So we're going to just get rid of it. It's so like I showed you in the video last night. This is what's going to replace it. I painted it white. Again, forget about the horrible paint job. This is out of a Mazda. So see the couriers, you know, your entry level courier got a gas gauge down here where the ammeter was. And a light and a light. That's it. No temperature gauge, no charging gauge, just idiot lights and a gas gauge. If you had the XLT, this is the cluster you got. You got the full gauges. Now, the first-gen couriers had full gauges, all of them. I don't know why they did that. And here, what are you doing? Oh, no, no, don't touch the needle. You'll snap that thing off really easy. Okay, so... 
the Mazdas, all of them got this set up. You know, temperature gauge, fuel gauge, idiot light for the thing. And like I mentioned last night, you know, I've got the early speedometer in it. Instead of this would be the more correct one. You see, a lot more cluttered looking. I don't care that it goes to 100 versus 90, but, you know, just not as cool. So, we're going to be putting this speedometer head into that cluster. And because the lenses had cracks, these booby lenses, um, we're going to use these lenses since they're in better shape. And you can see maybe, yeah, you can see on the video where it's fogging. I'm going to clean these really well, and I'm going to drill a few holes like i could take the sticker off but i'll drill a few little holes top and bottom and i'll probably take a piece of copper tubing or a brake line and put a bend a little 90 degree bend or maybe i can drill a hole straight out of the back can i do that no i can't do that because there's a pretty God, that going fast. anyway we'll drill a hole 90 degree and that'll let it vent so it won't build up moisture. Of course, living in Oklahoma, I'm probably not going to have this problem anyway. So, we get home. We pull this thing back off. This cover off. The cigarette lighter is the worst thing um, to pull off. Of course, it always pulls the wires out of the back of it. We get this off of there. We pull the cluster. Disassemble. You know, pull the lenses, pull the speedometer, put it into this cluster, put that lens on it, and put it back in. I thought there was something else I wanted to do, but I can't remember what. Oh, well, it's not important at the moment. That's going to be this morning's job before I got to pick Luke up at 11.30. So, that's where we're at so far. Okay, so just for documentation... The gas gauge is reading just below half. And you can see that fogging as everything kind of warms up. So when I put this in, hopefully it'll read no worse than that. Because right now it's off by about a quarter of a tank. So I've got, I'm right just under three quarters of a tank right now. So it works in my favor, but hopefully this one will be either closer to correct or no worse than it is now. Okay, so just for documentation, the gas gauge is reading just below half. And you can see that fogging as everything kind of warms up. So when I put this in, hopefully it'll read no worse than that. Because right now it's off by about a quarter of a tank. So I've got I'm right just under three quarters of a tank right now. So it works in my favor, but hopefully this one will be either closer to correct or no worse than it is now. Alrighty, so there it is, ready to go back in. Again, forget about all the overspray and whatever caca. You're not gonna see it. What I did do, I drilled some holes, some small holes, and they're just barely poking through because hopefully it'll stop any dust from getting in there. And the point of that is to try to see if uh, moisture won't build up inside. So this lens is in better shape than the others, although it does have that crack there. Hopefully it won't spread. So I got the wires from that I added for the ammeter that didn't turn out to work taken back out, put back together. So now we're going to plug in all this stuff and the battery back up and make sure everything works like it's supposed to i don't think i'm gonna put the face back on because i really do need to get the other one on there and get this one thrown away so i will probably modify it because that is my biggest headache is that cigarette lighter i went ahead when i replaced it i got one that lit up and it fits nicely in this hole because originally it had a metal ring in this hole. So 
yeah, see, it fits nicely there. But I think what I'm gonna do is file the hole out so it'll fit over this thing. And that will make it easier to pull on and off because I still need to go through this. And like this thing, you can see it's crooked because when I put the double-sided tape in, the little shelf on the bottom, when I pushed it in, it turned it up. So it's kind of wadded in there. You can just barely see it. I really need to pull it back out and put a new piece in, but that stuff is good stuff, so I don't know if I'll be able to get it back off. So anyway, I've got about 40 minutes before I have to pick up Luke. So that should be more than enough time to get this back together. I'm going to go ahead and jump on that. Got her did. Call it done. All right, we're going to do a little bit of a hiccup here. This wire right here coming out of the back of my harness. So when I put the courier gauges in it, this is the 84 Mazda wiring harness. I had to repin the connectors to work on the courier connector. And so since I had the ammeter, I didn't have anywhere to hook which technically I guess I did, but um, the charge light wire too. So I didn't bother to hook it up. And there it is. So now I need to do that. Not a big deal, just a quick little fix. And that should hopefully make it work and then I'll throw this together. So yeah, this blank right here, that's where the charge wire would have been on that connector. I should have just went ahead and hooked it up, but I didn't. So, oh well, now it is, and it works. Okay, so I still gotta put the cigarette lighter back in, but I gotta go pick up Luke. So let's see what happens when we start this up. I need to put oil in too. got oil, brake, charge, of course temperature gauge isn't going to do anything, fuel gauge is coming up, it's reading a quarter now, <coughs> not quite enough, let's see, generator gauge goes right out, oil gauge goes, or light goes right out, So far, the gas gauge is reading lower than it used to, which is the opposite direction we wanted it to go in. Hmm. Guess we'll have to find out. I do not want to pull the cluster back out. Okay. Gas gauge has come up some. We'll wait to see what it looks like when I get over by where Luke is. I can see it's lighting up. Okay, I'm gonna pick up Luke now. Okay, so now that the gauge has had a moment to dwell, it's sitting about where it was on the other one. Uh, one thing I do like a lot better is that there is a focus there. There is a lot more real estate below the empty line than there was on the old gauge. 
so it might actually show. Instead of stopping on empty, it might actually go down lower. Because, like I say, right now we're pretty close to three quarters of a tank, not half a tank. And I can pull the gas tank all apart and adjust the flow, which is probably what I need to do, but that's a lot more work than it's worth. Temperature gauge so far is reading exactly where I want it to, if that's normal. Before it was reading, like you see, right now it's just below the halfway point. Before it was reading just above the halfway point, about the same. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with it. One other thing I just noticed too, is my, temp my bolt gauge is always red low. So, right now, you know, it's reading right where it's supposed to, I guess, but... Um, and so, you turn on the loads, and it drops quite a bit. Now, I did a bypass. See, the air conditioning's on, the lower fan's on fog lights are on, the headlights are on, high beams are on, and before it would be below the 10 volt mark, even though it would be charging just fine at the battery. Uh, there we go. It would always read really low. And so I did a bypass where I went straight from the battery to the back of the alternator to make sure it was always charging. I never had any problems with it, mind you. It never discharged. I never had a battery go dead, or low even. But, I only had like 11 volts in the system where I'd have, you know, 12 and a half, 13 volts coming out of the back of the alternator. So I had a huge voltage drop. Now, since I've gotten rid of the ammeter, and instead of the wire running through, the ammeter and back into the system. Now it just goes straight into the system. That's come up. So apparently, even though the ammeter wasn't reading anything, it was causing enough of a cork in the uh, system to be a problem. But anyway, so we'll pick up Luke here in a minute and uh, Go back home and see what the next step's gonna be. Maybe clean out all this mess down there. Yeah. I guess I should have actually taken some video of this before I started painting it, but before I get too far, here's my first coat. We're going with the stainless steel color. Set this around here. Hopefully it doesn't fall. Good. Scoop of color, stainless steel. This is a weird paint though. It won't take a recoat. Once you're done, you can't clear coat it. It's a very oily looking paint, but it holds up really well and it looks really nice once it's done. I didn't want to go with a bright silver. Um, I kind of want, I wanted to go machine turn, but that's just more work than I am prepared to do. And this hole is going to get covered. I'll probably go to like a trophy shop and have them do that. And I'll have them make one for the inside there. And we'll see what happens. But, yep, we'll give it another coat here in a second and then uh, finish her up. So nice for the sun to decide to come out. I went ahead and fogged the last coat so it gave it kind of a rougher texture and it let the metallic sit up high. This paint, you can't blow it. You can't flood it. It'll beat up like, like it has silicone on it. It's really weird. Um, I'll show you a picture here. I used this paint, probably the same can paint to uh, paint the grill on my Colt. And uh, when I tried to clear coat it, the clear coat just beat it up like water on oil. It was really weird. Um, I'll show you a picture here. Right, of, oh, cat, come on. I'll show you a picture right here. And so that was, Strange, but that paint has held up really well. The weather hasn't gotten to it. It hasn't come apart. Um, of course, I don't have the car anymore, but at least for the year or so after I spray painted it, it held up pretty well. A lot better than what is on the truck here.